But what he's really doing is saying, I see more, more, more in you. Church, do we know, do you know the length, do you know the measure of what Jesus had to go through to have us covered? And when you accept him, acknowledge him as Savior, as Lord, you are sealed. That means that nothing and no one, not even, not even your actions, can separate you from his love because he sealed you that no one can unseal you. So whatever labels they put on your life, the Lord is saying, I will not be contained. I will not be restrained by the label society has thrust upon you. Gay, straight, male or female, I will not be restrained by how much my love comes your way. I don't want you to know, I want you to know that God is fighting for everything he's given you. He's fighting for your sanity. Because Satan has released depression Suicidal tendencies, homicidal tendencies. He's released to us such a spirit of defeat that even those who claim to be his children are walking in a life of misery. But this day is the day that we say it's enough, it's enough. And, mm -hmm. Because God is still fighting. He's still pulling. He's still pulling that you can keep coming back to him. And no matter what you have done, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have done, no matter what you are doing, he's saying, you still belong to me. Oh God, do you understand this measure of love? Do you understand this measure of sacrifice? Do you understand his power? to resurrect his power to resurrect that which is lost, that which is blind, that which is dead? Do you truly understand the moment which we celebrate? That Jesus told death, death, you'll run your course. He told grave, grave, you can't hold me. I release myself from you. And when death and grave thought they had the best of him, it was then he got up. <laughs> you know what? I believe, I believe the Lord won't allow us to get up until we feel in moments that death and grave has the best of us. And then God says, let me show you. I'm here to dispel any notion. I'm here to dispel any misled notion that God won't go through any measure to show you how much he loves you. I'm here to let you know that no matter what you've been covered by, no matter what you are involved in, you can be born again. You can be resurrected. You can get back up. You can appear again. And what the death did and what people did, and the thing that I love about Jesus is this, is that Jesus allowed his haters to push him into his future. In a few moments, I just want about 50 of y'all to stand. Because I want about 50 of you to stand because all of us got some Judases. But not all of us have learned to appreciate what Judas did. We're allowing Judas to hold us and make us miserable. But I've learned to appreciate Judas. I've learned to appreciate every hater because if it had not been for the betrayal of Judas, it was Judas who pushed Jesus 
into his destiny. Oh, it was Judas. It was Judas who thought he was turning him in, but in essence, he was turning him out. And so I need about 50 more people because if your hater made you pray, if your hater made you push, if your hater made you see what God was attempting to do as they hovered over you, as they tried to manipulate you, because your hater, even with God, can be used as a vessel for your perfection. So let's give God some praise for every hater that pushes us into a new level of performance, into a new level of perfection, into a new level of expectancy. Matter of fact, let's give God some real joy, some real praise, some real hallelujah, because our Judases are going to make us shine. Come on, somebody. Come on, in our extended area of worship, come on. We give God thanks for every Judas spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God. He hung there. Forgiving. He says, you can't take my life. What a powerful statement. When you look at situations and people and you look at them with the desire and the intent and determination, you can't take what you didn't give. No, no, no. Uh, I got, let me help somebody. I need somebody to help me right now. I need about 100 of you all right now. When you get up in the morning and things oppress you and people are trying to, to manage you and they can't manage themselves, I dare you to get up. I need about 100 people right now. I need about 100 people right now. When you get to the place and you know you cannot take what doesn't belong to you, I don't give you that authority over my life anymore. God gave it to me. You can't have it. It belongs to me. Christ said, they can't take my life. I, I lay it down. 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 Oh God, we bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. Oh God, come on, church. Come on, we thank you. This is a wonderful day. I don't even feel like taking a text. I just feel like this, man, this, man, doesn't it feel good to know that God is still pulling for us? He's hoping we come back. And see, I, I speak life and to all of our young people today. I dare in the choir there uh, in the audience. Uh, I just want to speak life over you because you have so many more pressures than we had Back in my day, back in my day, you know, we just had a few stations, 3, 10, and 13. And as I said this morning, if you had a, some good aluminum foil, you could get channel 27. <laughs> we had only AM stations. Uh, you got internet, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, cell phones, iPads laptops, all these things that are pulling at your spirit. You're inundated. You're inundated with sex. You're inundated with bodies being the only thing that a person is able to display. And so sex is a driven force in our society. What feels good, what looks good. But I think you've lived long enough to know what everything that looks good isn't good for you. I think you live long enough that everything that sounds good isn't really what you need to hear. And so you're inundated 
and Satan has released the spirit of depression over this generation. They're wiser, but yet they're mentally and emotionally weaker. Come on, brothers. Back in the day, we would fight and live to fight again another day. There is such a genocidal spirit over our culture, our generation, that we must speak power over it. And I was speaking to a young man last week. We shared lunch together. He was depressed and going through a lot. I took time to share with him over lunch. And I was talking to him about loving himself because he made a statement, I love somebody more than I love myself. This generation can't find that perfect peace within when God is there. So they hope that they'll find love by others embracing them or them showering others with this thing called pseudo love. I sat with him, he asked me a very profound question. The thing has been ringing in my spirit because now I truly understand what so many people are facing. When I talked to him about God's love for him and his love for himself first, he said to me, how do you do that? How do you love yourself? No one has ever taught me how to love myself. No one has ever taught me how to appreciate myself. How do you do it? I sat there dazed for a moment. Because like you, most of us are so accustomed to giving religious answers that really doesn't answer any question. He said, I just don't know how to love myself. I don't know how to accept that God loves me like I am. And he was in a state of doing some of these things, most likely, but yet it is undoubtedly that the resurrection of Jesus was for him too. I, I'm trying to get to a text, but if I don't get there, y'all know it's Easter, it's Resurrection Sunday. I sat there with him. And he said, sometimes I want to cry, but I, I just can't. I said to him, the tears are a sign that you are in touch with your limitations. But also you're in touch with something so personal, so intimate that God uses tears to break down machoism because you really aren't macho until you cry and get back up and stand up. And so I desire for you today to know that God loves you enough to say that my son died for you, but he got up so you won't hang around the cemetery. He got up so you won't just be so accustomed and familiar with dead stuff. That you won't be so accustomed to puppy love, you never know how to love yourself. That you won't be so accustomed to a one night stand, but you stand standing on the word of God knowing, baby, you can't get this in one night. You better go through a lifetime of... This resurrection, this resurrection is powerful. And for so long, we've made mockery of it. We talk about, he got up, and that's all, but never understood that there was a powerful orchestration from God to show the world that even though you lay him here, some of y'all have been laid in some strange places. People laid you there. They said you couldn't do any more than you have done. You have reached your zenith. But I need somebody right now to say, neighbor, no, you have not. You have not reached the ultimate in your life because God is alive. I want to help you today as I look at the word 
in Mark because it says that the women were going to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. It is so profound that not even his disciples believed he would get back up. It helped me understand that even those who love me cannot totally understand my existence. Because what God has for me, God speaks directly to me. And unless you heard it from God, you cannot totally understand why I keep getting back up and getting back in and trying to do exactly what God said do. They're on their way to the tomb, but they're on their way with a misguided notion that they're going to anoint the dead body of Jesus. See, you can be sincerely wrong. And on their way, they're debating, they're contemplating, who is going to remove the stone? See, Satan, Satan thought it was over on Friday. Satan thought that betrayal and denial, denial, he thought that being frightened and frustrated, he thought that injustice and intolerance, he thought that distortion and discrimination, sexism and classism, bantering and beating, sin and failure, crucifixion and death, a stone and a soldier could guard the tomb of Jesus. I want you to know right now that whatever is guarding your future cannot stop you from your future. Let me say it again. Whatever is guarding you from your future cannot stop you from your future. Whether it's sexism, whether it's classism, whether it's discrimination, whether it's intolerance, whether it's hatred, whether it's sin, nothing, nothing that God has set in motion can be blocked. You are walking toward your God-ordained, God-appointed destiny. And I need somebody to help me right now and say, and can't nothing stop me not heaven or hell can nothing stop me not labels can nothing stop me no stone no soldier nothing in this world should stop me but me and they're on their way to anoint his body and they're saying who shall roll away the stone this overall work that God has for you because God will give you vision beyond your resources. Let me say it again. Let me, let me say it again. He'll give you vision beyond your resources. That's Mark. That's Mark. That's, that's Mark, y'all. He'll give you vision beyond your ability. He'll give you an anointing beyond your appointment. What this resurrection day means that you're worrying about a stone when the Lord has already caused an earthquake according to Matthew. The Lord said, by the time you get there, just get there. So neighbor, you're worried about too much. You're worried about too much. You're worried about too much. You're trying to fix everything. You're trying to figure out who's going to like you, who's going to approve of you, whether you're good enough. Just get there. So neighbor, just get there. Just get there. Shut your mouth and just get there. Stop complaining. Just get there. You gotta get there. You gotta get there. And when they got there, in Matthew's writings, it said that there was an earthquake and had it rolled a stone away. The soldier is afraid he's gone. Because why? Because God gives you vision. That's beyond your resources. And so I'm walking now to a place that I've never been before. Skepticism, hesitation. And sometimes, I must be honest, sometimes I'm a little afraid. But I don't have a spirit of fear. So some, sometimes I'm I'm like, Lord, I want to believe. 
But all this stuff around here and all these folk, Lord, are challenging. They're challenging me. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but some days you truly don't believe in what the Lord has already shown you. Because you're trying to live your life based upon someone else's approval and someone else's acceptance of your vision. Tap your neighbor so you may never understand where God is taking me. Look back at them and say, I don't have to. You just get there. And Mark 16, as they are on their way to the tomb, and they arrive at the tomb, the word of God says that God had already taken care of it. I want you to put aside all of your anxiousness. So how, how will it be when I get there? Just show up. Will I have enough when I get Just show up. Will they accept me when I get there? Just show up. What if I don't have enough? Just show up. Who's going to roll this stone away? The stone is not your problem. The stone is God's problem. God is going to fight your battle to open doors of possibility, to open doors of pregnancy, to open doors of hope, to open doors of joy. It's God. Oh. Y'all, y'all help me today. Okay, I, I just need a few folks for a praise break. I need a praise break. When you got to the place where God promised, he had already worked it out. Hey, can you give God some thanks right now? It, this is your path. Now, you got there. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what's going to work out. But when you got there, the Lord had already Worked it out. If he, if he, if he did it then. Oh, oh Lord, he'll do it now. This resurrection is, is something. It's about expecting God to do it. They're on their way to the cemetery. They get there. And the angel said, you are looking for Jesus. He's not here. That's Mark chapter 16. He's not here. He has risen like he said he would. Jesus, Jesus trusted his father so much that he did not allow himself to keep quiet. He told folk what the Lord was going to do in his life because he expected God to do it. Some of you are sitting on a great future testimony, but you are afraid to tell folk that God is up to something. You're being too cautious. You're being too scared. You are afraid that it won't happen. But if you know that you know that God said it, you are tell the whole world, God is about to heal my body. God is about to give me great deliverance. God is about to give me a promotion. God is about to bless my family. God is about to give me a new career. God is about to send me a new lover. God. Oh! I, I, want, I want you to do this for me since we're here today. Since we're here today. Whatever God has spoken to you, I want you to start repeating it out loud. I want you to start to say it because it won't manifest if you're too scared to see it. So if God said it to you, I want you to, don't, don't worry about her, don't worry about him. If God told you, speak it. You may take my life, I lay it down, but in three days, in three days, in three days, I'm going to get up again. I don't care whether you believe it or not. God told me, and God has the power to raise me up. 
as I, as I close this thing, I, I love part of this text in verse 7. <laughs> verse 7. Y'all, y'all see it with me? Jesus, Jesus says to them, angel says to them, Jesus is not here. I want to help you because some of you are looking for for living things in dead places. You, 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 can't, you can't find a husband when you're looking. Okay. Matter of fact, you can't find a wife where you're looking. See, there, there's more to a woman than hips, lips, and fingertips. Uh, okay, yeah, y'all, y'all, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if, if that's all you're looking for, you can get one real cheap. But if you're looking for somebody who will pray your butt through a storm, if you if you're looking for somebody who will encourage you when you are down and depressed. If you're looking for somebody who will call the name of Jesus when they have been called every name but a child of God, but yet they still believe that God is not finished with you, you got somebody on your side. I, I've come out to let you know, and I try to close this thing, that God, God invites you. This text says, as I close, it says, an angel told them, go to Galilee. Go and tell his disciples, including Peter. Oh my God. Brother Mayor, it says, go tell all my ushers. Go tell all my choir members. Go tell all the ministers. Go tell all the deacons and trustees. Tell all the missionaries and evangelists and apostles. Tell them all, but don't you forget Peter. Oh Lord, y'all, y'all help me now. Oh Lord. Do y'all know about Peter? Peter is the one that denied him three times. On the third encounter, Peter started cussing them out. I don't know the man, never seen him, don't know what he's doing. And Peter denied the Lord three times. Peter ran away in shame, in guilt. Peter now is isolated from the disciples because they want nothing to do with him because Peter Peter let them down but but they weren't even around the cross the only one around the cross was John the rest of the preachers were out fishing doing other stuff but at least Peter had the audacity to stay close and but, but now Peter Peter denied him is feeling guilty unworthy so he doesn't go to church anymore he stays home and watches television because television can't make you accountable he stays home and watches T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and Creflo Dollar and Jamal Bryant because they can't hold you accountable where you are Peter is isolated feeling guilty feeling ashamed of what he's done. But I got some good news for you. You don't have to feel ashamed when God can forgive you. You don't have to feel guilty when God can purge you. Oh, I feel my help coming on. You don't have to stay by yourself in isolation. He says, tell, tell them Tell my disciples, tell all the bishops, tell all the preachers, come on. But don't forget about the one who turned his back on me. My last thing that I want to share with y'all today is, no matter what you've done, the Lord still gives you a divine invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden 
and I will give you, I will give you rest. I'm saying to you right now, don't let the church, don't let the church people keep you from showing up because you don't act like them. You don't praise like them. You don't dance like them. You don't clap like them. You don't talk like them. When you know God has been good to you and they laid you in a place that you no longer want to be, when you say enough is enough and get up on your feet and declare today when you come into your kingdom, Lord, remember me. And Christ looks back at you and says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. So this last thing is, no matter who you are or what you've done, the Lord still sends invitations to you. He sent a divine invitation. I'm asking you to stand for a moment. He says, bring Peter to. How many of you know that the only requirement, uh oh, I'm gonna get in trouble now. How many of you know the only requirement to be saved is to believe and confess in the Lord Jesus Christ? So as I close, standing together, then why has the church put so many do's and don'ts? upon the people that they don't want to be anywhere near us. I dare somebody to say, but I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out. I'm breaking out. I ain't got to say it the way y'all want me to say it. I don't have to do it the way you want me to do it. As long as I got King Jesus, See, 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 some of us are sitting up to hell who ain't going to hell. Why? Because the Lord still invites us to come. Father, we give you honor and praise today. Honor, Lord, honor, because honor is due you. Praise because we recognize who you are. I pray, Lord, because some of these, your children, have been laid in some death-like places. They're in a job that does not seem to appreciate them. But Lord, right now, show them that you will remove the stone. They will become like Jesus. Where they laid him, he's no longer there. Look, this is where he was. But now he's gone. Father, I give you honor. I give you thanks. For your word today and thank you Lord that you still are fighting for us in Jesus name in Jesus name come on let's give God some praise today as we in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name come on I, I, I want to extend it to you even now as Christ does to Peter even if you deny him, he invites you to come back right now.